The trick is to draw some fine line between tyranny and overindulgence. In 1953, traditional jazz enthusiasts Bill Grower and Oren Keepnews launched Riverside Records to reissue classic jazz and blues recordings. Within two years, the label was producing influential modern jazz. Celebrating Riverside's 60th anniversary, the Concord Music Group has released five new titles in its original Jazz Classics Remasters series. Oren Keepnews, now 90, remembers how it started. We, we made the decision that we should do something noticeable, that we should get ourselves recognized as being a part of the current jazz scene. The next thing that happened was Monk signed with Riverside. Merely, by merely signing Monk, we had established one big goal in the, with the jazz community. The idea was if you were going to sign Monk, you either were serious about contemporary music or you were crazy, possibly both. Or in Keep News discovered Bill Evans. I first heard Bill Evans on the telephone. Took Bill under his wing. Bill was a very shy and diffident young man, but Mundell called us, called, called Riverside, got Bill Grower and myself on the phone at the same time and proceeded to play Bill Evans, a Bill Evans tape. I wasn't knocked out, but I was, you know, he's an interesting player. Can I hear more? Two weeks after Bill Evans recorded Sunday at the Village Vanguard, a jazz classic, the tragic death of Bill's bassist Scott LaFaro stopped the music. The, the effect of Scott's death on Bill should not be underestimated. Uh, Bill did not play at all for a big chunk of time. One summer night, while walking through Greenwich Village, Oren Keepnews ran into his friend, Clark Terry. As I passed by one of the celebrated clubs in the village in this period, we're in the mid-50s, at the Cafe Bohemia, Clark was standing in front of it with some other people, and he called out to me and he asked me to come over here. I want you to meet my friends, the Adderley Brothers, which was possibly the mo most momentous single occasion meeting I've ever had. The musicians who recorded for Riverside became family. One morning, Cannonball Adderley, fresh back off the road, back from Indianapolis, comes bursting into my office and said, I just heard this guitar player and we've got to get him for the label. I tell these stories about Wes Montgomery, about Bill Evans, about, in a somewhat, in a different context, Sonny Rollins. I'm dealing with an awful lot of musicians who were like the last ones to believe in themselves. On Wes Montgomery dates, I'll frequently find the notation, WM doesn't like his solo. And we'll go on and do it again. And on one classic situation, on a take which did turn out to be the last take, I had written, WM doesn't like his solo, but everyone else does. <laughs> Thelonious Monk was very definitely the patron saint of Riverside Records. I think that without Monk and what developed out of my working relationship with him, uh, that, that label would never have existed in the way that it did. <laughs>